Hello legal hustlers. In this video, we explore how traditional state actors now coexist and interact with a diverse range of non-state actors, including NGOs, multinational corporations, transnational advocacy networks, and violent non-state actors. Shift in the state-centric system and emergence of the non-state actors, NSAS. The shift from a state-centric system to the emergence of non-state actors, NSAs, has been a significant development in international relations. NSAS, including violent non-state actors, VNSAS, like rebel groups, terrorist organizations, and transnational criminal networks, have gained prominence due to various factors. 1. Globalization. 2. Technology. 3. Weak states. 4. Ideological and religious motivations. 5. Non-traditional security threats. Classification of non-violent non-state actors and violent non-state actors. First we will see. Non-violent non-state actors. Civil society organizations, CSOs, NGOs, advocacy groups, and grassroots movements focused on human rights, environment, and social justice through peaceful means like advocacy and community development. Private sector entities, businesses and corporations globally influencing international affairs through trade, investment, and corporate responsibility initiatives. International organizations, entities like the United Nations playing key roles in global governance, development, and peacebuilding. Violent non-state actors terrorist groups, organizations like Al-Qaeda and ISIS using violence for political, ideological, or religious aims, targeting civilians, governments, and international entities, insurgent movements, groups like the Taliban and FARC engaging in armed conflict to challenge state authority or seek political change, transnational criminal organizations, TCOs, Networks involved in illegal activities like drug and human trafficking, arms smuggling, and cybercrime, operating across borders. Features and role of non-sovereign actors in IR. Non-sovereign actors, NSAs, play significant roles in international relations, IR, contributing to the complexity and dynamics of global governance. Here are some key features and roles of NSAs in IR. 1. Diverse actors. NSAs include NGOs, multinational corporations, international organizations, civil society groups, and advocacy networks, bringing diverse perspectives to global issues. 2. Global influence. NSAs operate internationally, influencing policies, norms, and decision-making at various levels through trade, diplomacy, advocacy, and cultural exchange. 3. Advocacy and lobbying, NSAs. Advocate for causes like human rights, environmental protection, and peace building, using their networks and resources to influence governments and public opinion. 4. Economic influence. Multinational corporations and economic NSAs impact global trade, investment, innovation, and corporate social responsibility practices. 5. Norm Entrepreneurship NSAS shape international norms by promoting values such as democracy, human rights, and environmental sustainability, monitoring compliance and holding actors accountable. 6. Conflict Resolution NSAS support conflict prevention, mediation, and peacebuilding through humanitarian assistance, reconciliation programs, and working with international organizations. Multinational Company MNC. Multinational companies MNCs, are corporations that operate in multiple countries, managing production, marketing, and sales on a global scale. They often have headquarters in one country, the home state, while conducting business activities in other countries, host states. MNCs play a significant role in the global economy, driving innovation, creating jobs, and facilitating international trade. However, they also face challenges such as navigating diverse regulatory environments, cultural differences, 
and ethical considerations related to their impact on local economies, environments, and societies. Home state and host state. Relations refer to the diplomatic, economic, and legal interactions between a multinational company's, MNC, home country, where it is headquartered, and the countries where it operates, host states. These relations are crucial for MNCs as they navigate regulatory frameworks, investment policies, taxation, and trade agreements in different jurisdictions. Home states often seek to protect the interests of their companies abroad, while host states aim to ensure that MNCs comply with local laws, contribute to the economy, and respect environmental and social standards. Effective management of these relations is essential for successful international business operations. Environmental pollution. Environmental pollution refers to the contamination of natural resources such as air, water, and soil due to human activities, including industrial processes, emissions, and waste disposal. This pollution has wide-ranging impacts on ecosystems, public health, and climate change, prompting calls for sustainable practices and environmental regulations. Carbon lobbying. Carbon lobbying involves efforts by individuals, organizations, or industries to influence government policies and regulations related to carbon emissions, climate change, and environmental sustainability. Lobbying activities may include advocating for or against carbon taxes, emissions trading schemes, renewable energy incentives, and other measures affecting carbon-intensive industries. Labor law violations in sweatshops refer to unethical and often illegal practices in the workplace, particularly in manufacturing facilities, where workers are subjected to poor working conditions, low wages, long hours, lack of labor rights, and sometimes even abusive treatment. These violations are commonly associated with multinational companies, MNCs, and global supply chains especially in developing countries where labor regulations may be lax or poorly enforced. Sweatshops exploit vulnerable workers, often including women and children, leading to concerns about human rights, social justice, and corporate responsibility. Efforts to combat sweatshop labor include regulatory reforms, ethical sourcing initiatives, and transparency in supply chains. Now we will see some case study. Royal Dutch Shell is one of the world's largest oil and gas companies, operating globally with significant operations in Nigeria, the United States, the Netherlands, and other countries. Controversies 1. Niger Delta Oil Spills Shell has faced criticism in legal action for oil spills in the Niger Delta region of Nigeria, leading to environmental damage, loss of livelihoods for local communities, and health hazards. 2. Human rights violations. The company has been accused of complicity in human rights abuses, including allegations of collusion with the Nigerian government in crackdowns on protests and environmental activists. Responses. 1. Corporate Social Responsibility, CSR, Shell has implemented CSR initiatives to address environmental concerns, support community development projects, and promote sustainable practices in its operations. 2. Legal challenges. The company has faced lawsuits and pressure from civil society groups, leading to settlements, compensation payments, and commitments to improve environmental stewardship and human rights practices. Nike is a multinational corporation specializing in sportswear, footwear, and equipment, with a vast supply chain involving factories in countries like China, Vietnam, and Indonesia. Controversies Labor practices Nike has been criticized for labor violations in its supply chain, including allegations of sweatshop conditions, child labor, low wages, and lack of worker protections. Transparency issues The company faced scrutiny for lack of transparency and accountability in monitoring and addressing labor rights violations in subcontracted factories. Responses Supply chain audits Nike implemented supply chain audits and monitoring mechanisms to improve labor standards, 
enhance worker safety, and ensure compliance with ethical sourcing practices. Stakeholder engagement. The company engaged with stakeholders, including NGOs, labor unions, and consumers, to address concerns, enhance transparency, and promote responsible business practices. The United Fruit Company, now Chiquita Brands International, was a major American corporation involved in the production and export of bananas, with significant operations in Central America during the early 20th century. Controversies Political influence The company wielded considerable economic and political influence in countries like Guatemala, Honduras, and Costa Rica, leading to the term, banana republics, to describe nations where foreign corporations had significant control over local economies and governments. Labor exploitation United Fruit Company faced criticism for exploiting labor in its plantations, including low wages, poor working conditions, and suppression of labor rights and movements. Responses Historical context The concept of banana republics highlighted the legacy of corporate influence, colonialism, and economic dependency in shaping political and economic structures in Central America. Labor reforms Over time, labor reforms and movements in countries like Guatemala sought to address labor exploitation and improve working conditions, leading to shifts in corporate practices and government policies. Thank you for watching. We're thrilled to have you here and hope that you find our content informative, engaging, and entertaining. Be sure to like, share and subscribe and don't forget to join us for further updates.